am keeping tally. This will be the sixth time I say this today. We're going to keep tally from now till the EOC. The sixth time I say today because the reality is the results of this EOC mean way more to me than they do to you. Well, this is the sixth time I've said it today. Oh, yeah, Alan did the Can you tell Josh to stop biting my hair? Can you get out the coffee? Okay, here's the problem. We're recording this. So Josh would actually, if he if I played it for his parents, would hear you actually saying, Josh, stop biting my hair. This could work to my benefit. Okay. Shh. Figure four. Figure 42. Problem 42. The figure shows lines R. Points P, T on line R and point Q not on line R, also shown as ray PQ. Consider the partial construction of a line parallel to R through Q. What would be the final step? Well, even if you didn't know much about constructions, you would get that if it's going through Q and it's parallel, it's going to be somewhere along there, right? You are drawing a line through Q and S. Okay? My drawing is bad there, and I get that it actually have gone like through S. Okay? So the correct answer there is B. Okay? 43 is that same type of construction. Okay? Consider the part, partial construction of a line parallel to R through point Q. What would be the final step? Which, okay, but they now say which of the reasons listed contribute to proving the validity of the construction? Okay, and I realize that that wording might sound weird. So when it says when two lines are cut by a transversal and the corresponding angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. That at least sounds like something to do with parallel lines, correct? When we go through it, that's actually going to be the answer, but if I don't even understand the question, I'm going to say like, okay, maybe A is what they're talking about, okay? When two lines are cut by a transversal and the vertical angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel, okay? Well, we're not dealing here with vertical angles, right? We're dealing with, I can see, I have, I can actually see the notation. Looks like I have an angle there and I have an angle there. Those are, course, those are going to be corresponding angles. Definition of a segment bisector, I'm not doing a segment bisector, am I? No. I'm not constructing a segment bisector, and I'm not constructing an angle bisector. So the correct answer is A. 44. Luke purchased a warehouse plot of land for his business. The figure represents the plot of land. Okay. What is the perimeter of the plot of land rounded to the nearest tenth of foot? Okay. So this is 60 units long, correct? This is 70 units long. This is 50 units long. In order to find this length, I have to use the distance formula. So 70 minus 50 is 20. Squared is 400. And 60 minus 0 is 60. Squared is 3,600. Yeah. So I know for this one it wouldn't make a difference, but like for any other one, mm -hmm. would it make a difference if you did like no, if you did 50 minus 70 and got, because you would get negative 20, yeah, negative, negative 20, 20 squared. So it doesn't make a difference. Okay? So the square root of 4,000 is what? 200. No. No, I'm doing, wait, we're doing something wrong here. No. 4,000, guys, not 40,000. 4,000. 63.2. 63 63.2. Guys, look. Yeah, I know. I just, like, came that from my head. Okay. 
I know because the four is a is perfect square is two, but four thousand square root is sixty three point two four. Okay, so sixty three point two four plus seventy and sixty is one thirty, right? Plus fifty. Okay, and they said rounded to the nearest tenth of foot, so 243.2. Do you understand how we got that one? Now, what is the area of the plot of land that does not include the warehouse and the parking lot? So I'm going to find the area of the total, and then I'm going to find the area of the warehouse and the area of the parking lot and subtract. So the area of the total, what's the formula for area of a trapezoid? Base 1, base 2. So 70 plus 50 is 1,200, right? Mm -hmm. Divided by 2 is 60. Sorry, 120 divided by 60. Sorry, 70 plus 50 is 120. Divided by 2 is 60. And 60 times 60 is 3,600. So that's the area of the whole. Okay. This square here, actually let's do this trapezoid. Now guys notice this parking lot starts at 4 and goes to 50. So this base is not 50 units long, it's 46, correct? And this one here goes from 420 to 3920, so 39 minus 4 is 35. So now I'm going to say... 35 plus 46 is 81 divided by 2 times 20. So I'm going to end up subtracting 810. And I'm also going to end up subtracting this space here, which has a length of 35, correct, and a height of 30. 1,050. And so when I take 3,600, I subtract 1,050, and I subtract 810, I believe I get 1,740, correct? How, yeah, how does that like, make sense if like, that one's 20, like the line right there? Yeah. No, the other side. Like, like, no. This one wasn't, yeah. wait. This one wasn't 20. Sorry, this is still a miswrite from when I said the area of 4,000 and somebody yelled out 20. Okay. This was 63 something, I think. Okay, because that's how I knew the 20 wasn't making sense. Because if this was 60, that couldn't be 20. Okay, and that's what you do when you do math, hopefully, right? You say, hey, wait, that can't be. Okay? And then for C, Luke is planning to put a fence along the two interior sides of the parking lot. The sides are represented in the plan by the legs of the trapezoid. What is the total length of fence needed to the nearest tenth? So this here is 20, correct? And then I did distance formula over here. So 50 minus 39. I'm going to give you a whole, oh, I don't know where the Kleenexes are. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 50 minus 39 is 11. 11 squared is 121, right? Okay. And this, oh, sorry, so, okay, and then 0 minus 20 is, squared is 400. 20 times 20 is 400. So 400 plus 121 is 521. What's the square root of that? So this is 22.8, and this is 20. So 20 plus 22.8 is 42.8. Did you follow that? Run us to the nearest tenth of foot is 42.8. That's okay, tenth of a foot. But thank you, because I screw it up all the time. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next problem. Get rid of that calculator. It's annoying me.
Which of the following statements can be concluded from the triangle? Okay. U has to be congruent to T. Why? Because it's yeah. US and UT. We don't know if those are congruent or not, correct? So we can't con conclude that. But US and ST are congruent. They're even marked for us. We don't know if the measure of angle U is congruent to the measure of angle S, correct? Um, we do know that STU is an isosceles triangle. We don't know if T is congruent to S. We don't know about ST and UT. We don't know that it's equal. Okay? Okay, 46. We're not doing 46 because this exceeds what you'll be asked to do. Basically, if they have a series of where are you going? Did you finish that all? No, I was told you had a hundred question packet for Calderon. That's what you're working on. It's a very fast Why do you need to get it from our cl class? Hold on, we're pausing. I'm going to take care of this. You stay right here, sweetie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, take one. Take number one. Okay, for number 47. For number 47, when they're asking you why the scale factor could be used to map a circle onto another circle, basically what they want you to get the gist of is that any circle, whether you, however you dilate it, is going to be similar to any other circle. So you can take any circle and by dilating it, by making it smaller or larger, map it onto another circle. All circles are similar. That's really what they want you to get there. Basically, what they're asking is, what are two ways on a coordinate grid to prove that something's a right triangle? So two ways to do it. First of all, you could use Pythagorean theorem. Since it's a coordinate grid, you could figure out that that's at negative 1, negative 2, correct? And that's negative 2, 1. And that's 4, 3. And you could use Pythagorean theorem and see that it's a right triangle. Or... You could find the slope of each of these lines, and if these two lines, AC and AB, are negative reciprocals, then they are perpendicular, so they're going to intersect and form a 90-degree angle. So that's a right triangle. <coughs> 50. A concrete cylinder has the dimensions shown and a mass of 1,450. Okay, we're finding the density. Remember, density is mass over volume. The radius of this is 1, correct? 1 squared is 1 times pi, 3.14, times 2, 6.28. So the volume is 6.28. The mass is 14,500. 14500 divided by 6.28 is 2,308. Guys, the nice thing about this one, let's say you forget for density which goes on top. It's like a DMV. It's like a DMV, but also look. Look at the way they have, they have kilograms over meters cubed. Meters cubed is a volume. Kilograms is exactly here, kilograms. So you can look at the key if for some reason you get confused about which one goes on top, especially if they give you... It just, it just looks like it fits. Like the M has a condensed to the And it would just... It's a heart. Exactly! It's a heart. It just connects. So for number 51, I absolutely hate this problem. Okay? So I found yeah, sorry, that the best thing to do was recall 
that one liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. So 15 liters is 15,000 cubic centimeters, correct? Since everything else here is going to be in cubic centimeters, then I can compare it better. A cone with a radius of 25 and a can height of 27 centimeters. So that's going to be 25 times 25 times 3.14. Actually, I'm rolling, rumbling off a lot of numbers here. I better type these in. 25 times 25 times 3.14 times 27 by three. divided by 3. And that gives me 17,662 and they want which of the following containers describes a container that could be completely filled with water from the tank and leave less than point. So is 15,000 cubic centimeters going to fill my cone? No. Okay? A cylinder with a radius of 15 and a height of 21, I believe when I do this all, now that I can read my writing, is about 14,836. That's about right. Okay? Is this going to be able to be filled by this? Yes. And is that going to leave some water in the tank? Less than 0.5 liters, so less than 500. Yes. Okay? So B is a correct answer. C, 1,400, wait, 14,520. So 15,000 minus 14,520 is going to leave 480 so cubic centimeters, so less than a half of a liter, right? It doesn't, that's the problem. It doesn't it say doesn't it, but it is. I know. On your test, not only will it say it, but when there's select all that apply, it won't say A, B, C, D, E. It'll have little, like, boxes. Okay. A rectangular pyramid. This one only has a volume of 5,000. So while you could fill it, it's going to leave 10,000 cubic centimeters. So it's going to leave too much water. Okay, and this one I think is 15,000. So I don't like this. This technically meets the criteria because it completely fills it and leaves less than 0.5 liters of water in the tank. Okay, so your answers here are B, C, E. 52. All we're basically doing is reflecting coordinate B across this line. So instead of being three units up, it's three units below the line, which is at three, negative two. Okay? And for 53, you're filling in reasons. P, Q, S. So this angle is congruent to R, S, Q. And, okay? And by the way, they already told me these lines are parallel. So I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. What is that? Alternate. Those are alternate interior, interior angles. Yeah, that's my favorite chapter. Yeah, I love that. Okay. Teachers, please explain. This interruption. Please check on your email the list from Ms. Rosado and send the Jaguar of the Month students to the media. That center wasn't any of you, sorry. With their backpacks. Jaguar I already looked. Of the month students to the media center with their backpacks at this time. Okay. Now, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. I actually put. <coughs> PQ is congruent to RS. I also put PS is congruent to QR. On the answer thing, they only had this here, but you could put both of them. Okay? Basically, if you have this all marked up, we also marked that these angles were congruent and 
this, is congruent to this. So it's angle, side, angle. When you look at the answer key, they said something on the answer key about part D. I think that was just like left over from something. Well. Yes. Is it also on number seven there's a typo because you're free to that PT but it says PT. Hold on, where? On the on number seven. There's just like a typo there. Does it make any difference at all to us on the proof? No, then I'm not gonna worry about it. I see what you're saying though. It should say I see what you're saying. Hold on. Let me just stop this. <laughs>